very good. Okay, so tell me about your work with the LGBTQ community. Well, it goes back decades. So in 1971, I was the only woman, woman to sign on to We Demand, which was the first in those days called gay uh, demonstration on Parliament Hill and demand for uh, LGBTQ folk not to be considered illegal um, and the acts not to be illegal. There were lots of really problematic uh, laws on the books back then. So uh, from there, um, I guess the next uh, moment was I did the first legalized same-sex marriage between two women who came into my church as the United Church Minister. That was before the law changed, uh, by about six months before. And it was vetted by the registrar's office. Uh, they simply made a mistake. They thought it was a man and a woman because their names were Paula and Blanca. Uh, and, uh, and from there, uh, continued when I was elected to introduce Toby's Act many, many times over many years before it was finally passed to add gender identity and gender expression to the Ontario Human Rights Code, which uh, really just puts trans folk uh, into the Human Rights Code, just gets them covered by human rights. And then just this last little while, uh, we passed uh, banning conversion therapy, which is the attempt to turn LGBTQ kids straight. Uh, that is now banned in Ontario for those under 18 and delisted for adults. So um, there have been other, I worked on the GSA amendment as well, there have been other things I've done, but those would be the major uh, high points of, of what I, my involvement with the queer community. Okay, so I'm just going to get you to explain Bill 77 in sure. your own words. Yeah. yeah, Bill 77 bans conversion therapy for young people 18 and under and delist it from OHIP for adults. And what conversion therapy is, is the attempt by uh, psychologists, doctors, psychiatrists, guidance counselors to turn LGBTQ kids straight. Uh, it's based on nothing but faulty assumptions. It's actually abusive. It's very abusive to children. Uh, the medical establishment recognizes that and uh, this puts that into law. Uh, the reality is it was going on in Ontario. Um, in many places there were psychiatrists that I heard from who made their pra entire practice out of this. So it was time to act. I'm, I'm happy that we did. It, it was also pretty historic for a third party private member's bill to be tabled and passed within two months into law. That, as far as I know, hasn't happened. It certainly hasn't happened in the last 20 years or so. Okay, and what um, steps can Toronto take to become more inclusive as a city? Um, Toronto, uh, well, the first thing that, that comes to mind is that we can open up access for trans folk because when you have a diagnosis of gender dysphoria, there's only one place to go now to start the process that ends in, uh, well, never ends, but that can, culminates in a medical sense in, in sex reassignment surgery. The, the, place, the only place to do that is CAMH, and that's ridiculous across the whole of the province of Ontario. We have over a thousand trans people waiting for those services. Um, we need to open that up. So that's number one. Um, but certainly, you know, there's lots to do, especially for the trans population. In the trans population, we have a 50% suicide attempt rate. We have a 50% poverty rate. Uh, these are horrific statistics, and we need to address uh, that. And it's really by putting Toby's law into practice. It's one thing to pass a law, it's another thing to enforce it, and it's another thing to, to educate people that it has been passed and that this is how they should behave. So we're in that process. I mean, I think other issues, for example, the sex ed curriculum when it came out, clearly the reaction to that and the response to that, a lot of that was simply homophobia. And again, it speaks to the necessity to educate our children, to educate their parents, to educate everyone uh, about LGBTQ issues. Uh, we had a, a school, even in my riding, where parents were ripping down the signs for, for LGBTQ inclusion. This has to stop. There's no excuse for it. Uh, and again, um, that clearly is a necessity, and we saw that very clearly in the reaction to the sex and new curriculum.